Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Alright, let's get into it. Today I'm going to be reviewing not one but two books. So what actually happened to me is that I read the second book first and then I realized that there was a first book and I read it like after. And the books are A Rogues of One's Own and then Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. So these are like romance books, they're really cute, they're historical. And what I liked about this um, series specifically is that it's a historical romance, not in the way of the books that you find at Walmart with the ranchy little like damsels in the stress and the crazy muscular man in the background. I I think you know what I'm talking about, the ones that like housewives would read, including myself sometimes. Um, anyway. So the books are set in Oxford, England, and they talk about the suffragist movement. It's a historical romance about suffragists. And the first book talks about a woman who doesn't come from a very wealthy family and ends up accidentally kind of falling in love with a duke who's supposed to be marrying someone of his own status. But obviously, as you know, that's not how it ends because hello, historical romance. And it, it's a very enjoyable book. I like the plot. I think it's a very simple book to read. It's one of those books that I would recommend if you're looking for a little joy in your life, a little funny romance in your life, and just makes you feel kind of good at the end. I like how the author portrayed the suffragist movement of this era and a little historical accuracy on how sexism used to be and how bad it used to be back in those days. Specifically because both characters in both books, both female characters, which are also suffragists, struggle through going to school slash college in Oxford and how different they're treated and they're determined as less than because they're women, which is exactly what happened in real life. Of course, this is a historical romance, so there's a lot of plots in there and a lot of events that never happened but it kind of gives you a glimpse of what it was like to be a woman in those times in a very romantic sugar-coated way that still kind of shows you the raw life that you could have had. Both of the books end in a really good ending, a uh, happy ending might I say. So if you're looking for something that is not gonna make you cry at the end of it and it's not gonna give you that like horrible book nostalgia at the end where you're like oh my god everything's dreadful then these two books are the best for you bringing down the duke and again a rogue of one's own and on rogues of one's own i really enjoyed the rivalry between the characters because it gave me a glimpse of love that is not completely the nicest i guess where you can see the ugly parts of other people but you still care about them and cherish them and actually give a hoot about them. So in the romance department, this is definitely a great set of books to read. Again, you don't have to read them in order, you can just read one or the other, but I would recommend reading them in order. But definitely Rogues of One's Own is way better than Bringing Down the Duke, in my opinion, because the female character in this is feisty, is interesting, has a amazing depth and background story for a romance book that is usually disregarded as not the best. Usually uh, historical fiction is not taken too seriously in the book department per se, but this romance historical series was definitely something I enjoyed. So I highly recommend it. What I also enjoyed a lot about the second book is how subtly they gave us an idea of how important it was to have a medium of communication for not just suffragists but any type of movement. In the second book, spoiler alert, uh, she's trying to get her hands on a publishing slash newspaper company so she can publish pamphlets and stuff like that without having to be censored by male owners of the other publishing slash newspaper houses and on this one 
Uh, that's where the whole problem sets because he's trying also to get a hand out of this and he's trying to protect her or whatever but she doesn't need protection she's an independent strong woman so what I liked about this book is how briefly and sugar-coated but nicely told us the extent of media specifically in this time and how it can affect a movement how important it is for a movement to have a place to publicize their things if that makes any sense what i'm trying to say is that this book in a very subtle way explains to us how important it is for a movement to have a voice and be heard otherwise it just doesn't make any sense as for the romantic part of the books, there is a lot of sexual tension in them, which makes you really engage with the story because this author is great at writing that type of tension without being like super explicit about it. And you just get really into the story, the romance plot in it, and you just want to know when the hell they're gonna kiss or when the hell they're gonna go to each other's rooms and do stuff. So it's like you get really into the story, the romantic side of it. Uh, which I enjoy because it's supposed to be a romance story and it doesn't resemble anywhere near the romance stories you find at Walmart in the discount section with the uh, raunchy little freaking pictures of women in really awkward positions like my god and, and it's just nice to read it's very enjoyable it does have explicit stuff so definitely for adults so yeah, that's my review of this uh, two books together and I highly recommend reading the second one. The first one is kind of nice, quick read, as you can tell it's not the thickest. And if you want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe or check out my YouTube channel. Thank